Hey guys, welcome back to part two of this video series. In part two of this video series, I'm going to discuss about configuration of an iSCSI target server and steps required to create few iSCSI disks, which can be mapped as clustered shared volumes onto Hyper-V hosts. I will also discuss about how iSCSI initiators on Hyper-V hosts can be configured to connect to the iSCSI targets to access the iSCSI disks and how these iSCSI disks need to be formatted for using them in failover cluster. So before we can start deploying and configuring the Hyper-V role using failover cluster feature, we need to deploy an iSCSI target server which can provision shared iSCSI volumes to the Hyper-V nodes node 01 and node 02. These shared iSCSI volumes will be mapped as clustered shared volumes onto Hyper-V nodes to store the virtual machine files. One of these iSCSI volumes will be used as a quorum disk for the Hyper-V failover cluster and iSCSI target 01 is the iSCSI target server in this lab environment, which will provision the iSCSI volumes to Hyper-V nodes. But first, we will install the iSCSI target role service on this server, which is designated as iSCSI target server. I've already logged into iSCSI target 01 using an administrator account. I'm going to open up the PowerShell window and I will type this command, which will install the iSCSI target role service. I'll press enter. All right, you can see it has successfully installed the iSCSI target server role and it does not require any restart. Okay, after installing the iSCSI target role service, you need to run some PowerShell commandlets to create the iSCSI volumes and provision them to Hyper-V nodes, node 01 and node 02. This first command creates an iSCSI virtual disk iSCSI LUN 1.vhdx of the size 10 GB in the folder D drive iSCSI volumes with the description iSCSI LUN 1. This iSCSI virtual disk of 10 GB in size will be used as a quorum disk for the two node Hyper-V failover cluster. I will press enter. Okay, it has created the first disk. Now the second command will also create an iSCSI virtual disk iSCSI LUN2.vhdx of the size 200 GB in the folder D drive iSCSI volumes with the description iSCSI LUN2. Now this iSCSI virtual disk of 200 GB in size will be used as a clustered shared volume for the two node Hyper-V failover cluster. Okay, the second disk is also created. Now the third command will create a new iSCSI target with the target name iSCSI target 1, which would consist of iSCSI initiator IP address of Hyper-V nodes node 01 and node 02. The IP address specified in this command or the IP address of the iSCSI network adapter on Hyper-V nodes. The target would be used to map the iSCSI virtual disks to Hyper-V nodes as shared disks. All right, the iSCSI targets have been created. Now the next set of commands will map the two iSCSI virtual disks to both Hyper-V nodes by specifying the iSCSI target name created from the previous command. So this command will map iSCSI LUN1 to the iSCSI target one, which we have created. And the second command will map the iSCSI LUN2 to the same iSCSI target 1. Okay, this is done. So we have configured the iSCSI target server. After configuring the iSCSI target server, the next step is to configure the iSCSI service on the Hyper-V failover cluster nodes, node 01 and node 02. For that, we are going to run few PowerShell commandlets in an order. I have already logged into my admin desktop using appropriate administrator credentials from where I'll be running these PowerShell commandlets. So I'm gonna open the PowerShell window. I'm going to run this commandlet which will set the iSCSI service on the cluster nodes to automatic and start the iSCSI service as well. 
Next, I will run this commandlet to connect the cluster nodes to the iSCSI target portal by specifying the IP address of the iSCSI adapter, which is 192.168.12.211. All right, this is done. So now both the cluster nodes are connected to the iSCSI target portal. Okay, after connecting the cluster nodes to the iSCSI target portal, I will run this commandlet to update the existing list of iSCSI targets in iSCSI target portals on the Hyper-V cluster nodes. Okay, next I will run this commandlet to get the list of iSCSI targets configured on node 01 and node 02. And I will make a note of the node address of the iSCSI target. This is the node address that the Hyper-V cluster nodes would connect to. Now I will run these commandlets to connect the cluster nodes to the iSCSI target by specifying its node address captured from the previous commandlet along with the initiator IP address of node 1 and node 2, as well as the target IP address of the iSCSI target server. And set the ease persistent switch to true to ensure that the cluster nodes connect back to the iSCSI target server if these cluster nodes are rebooted. All right, I'm running this first command on node 01. I will run the same command for node 02, which is done. Optionally, you can run this commandlet to ensure that the iSCSI sessions are established back even if the cluster nodes are rebooted. So this command must be run after the previous commands, which is used to connect to the cluster nodes to the iSCSI target. So this way, this commandlet will get all the existing iSCSI sessions and register them. Okay, so this is done. Once the iSCSI disks are presented to Hyper-V nodes, they need to be initialized and made online before they can be used by failover cluster. So I've already logged into one of the Hyper-V node to which the iSCSI disks are presented. So I will open up the disk management and you can see these two iSCSI disks which have been presented. First one is the 10 GB and the second one is 200 GB disk. So I will right click on one of the iSCSI disk and click online. I will do the same thing for the other disk, disk two, click online. I will again right click on one of the iSCSI disk and click on initialize disk. In the initialize disk screen, I will select the desired partition style, either MBR or GPT. For this lab purpose, I will select MBR and click on OK. Now both iSCSI disks are ready to use for failover cluster. When you initialize and set the partition style for this iSCSI disks on one cluster node, it is not required to perform the same steps on all the other cluster nodes. The last step is to format them. So the 10 GB disk will be used for quorum disk and the 200 GB disk will be used for clustered shared volume. So let me right click on the 10 GB one and I'll say new simple volume, click next, click next, and it's not required to assign a drive letter, click next, and the volume label, I'll name this as quorum, and I'll click next, and I'll click finish. All right, I'll do the same thing for the 200 GB iSCSI disk, right click on it and click new simple volume, click next, click next, I will not assign a drive letter, click next, and I'll name this as CSV1 and click next and click finish. Okay, so this concludes part two of this video series. In the next video, which will be the last part of this video series, I will discuss about deploying the Hyper-V role and failover cluster feature onto the Hyper-V hosts, as well as creating the failover cluster. I will also talk about configuring the cluster network storage and the quorum using failover cluster manager MMC Snappin.